welcome to part number three of my pressure washer trailer build. And on this video, I'm going to show you guys how I basically put the supply side of my trailer together. So you're looking at a northern tool hose reel right here. That's going to be the hose reel that holds my garden hose. I'm going to show you how to get that thing set up. Uh, this particular one you can see is set up for a pressure washer. It's actually for a high pressure, but I'm going to convert it to a garden hose. It works great. And then of course, we've got a buffer tank here. Now keep in mind, this is only a 65 gallon buffer tank. Um, that's because I'm a one man operation. I don't need a humongous tank. I've got a small trailer. So everything I've got to really think uh, strategically how I'm going to set this thing up. And then of course I've got the Hudson float valve, which will fit inside this tank. It takes up a little bit of room. So this 65 gallon tank is probably only going to be about a 55 gallon tank once I get that Hudson float valve in there. But again, it's just something I got to have. So anyway, let's get into the installations. All right, as you can see here, I've already got the hose reel attached to my trailer. Now it comes with a mounting plate on the bottom of it. And to be honest with you, I forgot to set my video camera up when I was putting that piece on. So what you guys are seeing now is that I, I use these U-bolts. It comes with a bottom plate and four bolts, but I think the U-bolts is a better way to secure this and it's been holding great. And so I'm just taking off the excess uh, you know, the of the U-bolts that are sticking out. I used um, locking nuts so I don't have to worry about these backing out when I'm driving down the road or the trailer's shaking. No vibration is going to back this thing out. So I'm really happy with the way this thing turned out. And it's, it's really solid uh, using this way of, of mounting it. All right, I thought I'd take a moment to show you the two fittings that I used to put this hose reel together. Remembering that this hose reel is actually for a pressure, it's set up for a pressure washer hose, but I'm converting it to a garden hose because this is the supply hose to my buffer tank. And so as you can see here, I've got a, a uh, half inch close uh, nipple with uh, you know half inch uh, regular pipe threads. And that's gonna go uh, into the uh, into the hose reel itself and then this is the adapter that you need that goes from pipe thread on the inside that's what's going to screw into the nipple to hose thread right that's different thread that's what the garden hose is going to screw onto and that's what you need to be able to convert this hose reel you know from a high pressure you know uh, set up to what, what I'm going to use it for. All right. And the last piece of this puzzle is this brass adapter fitting. Now, in order to con complete the conversion to a garden hose, we're going to need this fitting because we need the male end of the garden hose to screw into our hose reel. And so you need this adapter to go from male to female, but it's also a swivel because you're gonna be bringing the male into the garden hose in and you wanna be able to screw it on, right? Without having to literally twist the entire length of hose to get it to fit on there. So we're gonna put this brass adapter fitting on there and then we'll have the female end of the hose that will go onto the spigot on the house on the bitter end of the hose reel. All right, now I'm just going to prep this nipple with a little bit of pipe dope. Now, normally you would have to use the lock seal uh, pipe, seal, you know, thread lock, but this is not high pressure. So this normal pipe dope will work just fine. It'll, it'll keep everything from leaking. And I'm going to uh, do the reducer as well. You know, that's what I was showing you, the, the uh, one that will change it from normal pipe threads to hose thread. And so we'll just get both these pieces on here. And then lastly, um, once these are in place, we can put that swivel adapter on. What that's going to allow us to do is going to allow us to actually, you know, screw on to the hose, you know, without literally having to, uh, because we're putting the male into the hose in this, and that's what feeds the black hose that comes out of the hose reel and will go to the tank. Um, that's what, uh, what uh, is going to allow this to happen. So uh, again, this is the adapter to change it over to regular garden hose. 
Okay, now to speed things up a little bit, I just uh, went ahead and, and screwed that down. I'm going to snug this nipple up a little bit. The nipple was, uh, wasn't was quite tight, so just a couple more turns there. And really, this is not under pressure. I keep telling you that, so I'm not really worried about leaks. I'm ready to get my garden hose on there. Just going to wipe off a little bit of this extra pipe dope. I've chose to go with this Zero G hose. I got it at... Northern Tool, but I think Lowe's has it as well. I suggest finding a hundred foot length. I couldn't find a hundred foot when I was bought this, so I put two fifties together. I'd still got a hundred feet of supply hose on my reel, but man, it would be nice to have one single length of hose on it. Now it's collapsible, so what I do is I um, make sure that I get all the water out of the hose when I wrap it up. As you can see, a hundred feet pretty much fills this entire hose reel. Um, but I tell you what, it works really, really well. All right, we've got our reel installed. Next is to install the buffer tank. Didn't want to bore you guys with uh, drilling a bunch of holes. So I just thought I'd show you the, uh, the finished product. Basically just mounted four of these uh, D-rings into the floor of the trailer. Bolted them using lock nuts again keeping everything from backing out, and then finally strapped them down with some heavy-duty cargo straps. These things are not going anywhere. I'm really happy with the way they turned out. And as you can see, I did the same thing with the bleach tank right there. All right, now what I want to do is get this bulkhead union fitting installed for the overflow of the pressure washer. So this is a Essentially, it's a bulkhead union fitting, and I've got a uh, a uh, fitting on top that will the hose will fit into. It's a barbed 90 degree angle fitting for the top. And essentially, what I'm going to do is I got to drill a hole in the uh, in the tank for this to fit. So I got my hole saw, I'm matching it up. I could probably go a little bit bigger. This is going to be kind of tight, but that's okay. Um, I'm going to go ahead and go with this. You know, get my placement right in the tank right there in the top. You can see the overflow hose I've got is just kind of laying down there. So I'm going to, you know, drill right through the top of this tank and then, you know, basically install this, this bulkhead fitting. It comes with a, um, a gasket on it. So, you know, I really don't have to worry about it leaking because the tank is never going to be so high that, uh, you know, that these gaskets that come with the bulkhead fitting are gonna work. So just gonna screw this thing in. It does have reverse threads. That's why I'm kind of going lefty tidy here. It's reverse and uh, it is kind of tight. So I'm gonna have to grab my wrench here and cinch it down nicely. And then uh, I'm just kind of checking the gasket. There's a gasket on the underside as well. So I'm gonna put that piece on there and tighten it up. That'll just make sure that it stays in place. And then lastly, I'm gonna put this barbed fitting on. That's what the hose for the overflow hose is gonna go into. So I'm just kind of measuring it to length here. I'm gonna cut it with my uh, razor and then slip it on here. It's a good fit. What I don't show is that I do put a hose fitting on here. If you don't put a hose fitting on there, I guarantee you it's gonna pop off. All right, now that we've got our buffer tank installed, it is time to put the Hudson float valve in. And what you're looking at right here, the gray piece, that is the float valve itself. Um, what I'm doing now is just taking it off of the uh, off of the bulkhead fitting. Essentially, that's the installation kit. So the what happens is that sits down inside the tank, and when the water rises, essentially it shuts the flow of water from the garden hose. And so what I need to do is, is take this... Uh, bulkhead fitting apart and I need to make sure that I have the right hole drill for it because I got to drill a hole in the tank for this thing to mount on. So I've got one that I think is going to be the right size. I'm just going to kind of measure it up here and make sure that, uh, you know, when I, when I drill this hole, I want it to be just big enough. I don't want it to be too big. Uh, and so I think this one is going to be perfect. I'm going to go ahead and attach it to um, to my whole drill uh, mount and then uh, put it into the drill and go to it, man. I'm going to, I'm going to put a hole in the tank 
Hopefully it's the right size and then get this Hudson float valve installed. All right, before I go ahead and start drilling, all I'm going to do here is just kind of, you know, put this hose where I think it's going to, you know, be the best. I want to make sure that it has enough slack and, you know, I'm trying to keep the hose out of the way of other things. So I'm just kind of looking at how I'm going to route it. And then I'm going to, uh, now that I got my placement where I want it, go ahead and drill the hole just like I did on the overflow valve. This one's just a little bigger bulkhead. So go ahead and drill right down through the tank. You know, make sure that in case you get any plastic that does go into the tank, try to get that out as, as best you can. I did have a, one of the cutouts drop in there as so I just pulled it out. You don't want the plastic if you have a bigger piece to end up, you know, causing a, a clog in your flow. So uh, same thing with this. That went on really nicely. I'm just going to put the, uh, the gasket on uh, the bottom side, screw this thing up and uh, make sure it's nice and tight. And then I've got a, a couple of fittings that will reduce this down to the hose reel uh, fitting. So this, if you, this black hose, if you remember, is coming off the hose reel that I set up earlier in this video. And so this bulkhead fitting that I have for it is, is a little too big. So um, as you can see, the Hudson float valve, this is gonna go inside the tank. And so I just put a nipple on there. That's what's going to, and, and uh, you know, you probably don't need the pipe dope on there. I just put it on um, because I put it on everything just about on the, on the low pressure side. It's, if it leaks, it's gonna leak inside the tank. So really no big deal. Uh, but essentially all you do is you, you screw the Hudson float valve into the bulkhead fitting and it's, it's good. It drops down into the tank and, and it does take up about 10 gallons of room. So in other words, it's a 65 gallon tank, but the Hudson float valve is going to stop it at about 55 gallons, which is good because I've got a smaller trailer and I'm trying to reduce weight anyway. And, and, and since I'm only running... Uh, a one-man operation, 55 gallons is plenty. So now that I've got this thing, uh, you know, tightened up, what I've got to do now is I put, uh, I got a couple of, of uh, reducer valves. If I could have found one reducer valve, that would have been great. I had to put two in here to go from, I think it was, uh, gosh, I think it was three-quarter inch down to uh, three-eighths. So, in other words, it's, it's the same, the black hose is the same size hose as you're going to have on your pressure washer hoses. And so I had a, a, a couple of uh, reducers I had to put in there. And then this hose will, will screw down right on top of that. And again, it's low pressure. You know, the, the, the pressure on this thing is probably never going to be above uh, 40, 60 pounds max. So you really don't have to worry too much about leaks. The regular pipe dope is fine for this. I'm just kind of tightening it up, making sure it's nice and snug. And then as you can see, this hose that comes right off the hose reel and will, uh, you know, is fed by the garden hose is going to go into the tank. So in other words, I'll pull the garden hose, hook it to a customer's house, and then turn it on. And it's going to flow water right into my tank. And it'll cut off the flow of water when it reaches 55 gallons. I'm really happy with the way this setup worked. The hose reel worked perfect. You know, the tank is working great. And uh, so far, I'm, I'm pretty happy with the way I decided to set this supply side up of my pressure washer trailer. Just a couple of extra little pieces to tighten down and uh, we're ready to go. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the plumbing of the supply side uh, coming out of the tank. There I got a banjo filter, and then I go into the supply for the soft wash. You can see a hose going into the blend manifold. And then the next uh, T is basically, that's just a valve that goes off the side of the trailer in case I ever wanna wash my hands or anything. And then that black valve, that goes to the pressure washer and essentially supplies the pressure washer with water. And that's a, about a three quarter inch hose on there. Not about, I think it is a three quarter inch. And so that works really, really well. 
All right, let's take another view from the opposite side. Again, coming out of the tank, you see the banjo filter, a uh, better, little better view on where the water is coming into the blend manifold. You can see that T comes off, feeds the blend manifold with water. That works really well. Again, I'm trying to get down here to get you a view of it. It's all uh, one inch pipe. And then you see I got some valves. Uh, the blue valve there is going off the side of the trailer. Again, in case I want to wash my hands. See if I can come in. There's a good look at the banjo filter. It makes it really easy to clean that filter the way I've got it set up there. And there's the, the blue valve. That's for, uh, again, you know, uh, if I want to drain the tank or something like that, it just comes right off the side. And it works really well. I've washed my hands several times. Heck, I've washed my whole body with a, that thing just about. And again, the supply going to the pressure washer. I really could not be more pleased with the way this thing is set up. One man operation, it's a money making machine. Yeah. Anyway, I hope you like this video. Don't forget to smash the like button. Subscribe if you can. Yeah.